Hi there, don't forget to subscribe and like to our show. It's the group CEO of Red One, Farid Yunus, right here on the RSS with HD. Hi everyone, welcome to the show and of course, as usual, Harish and, and I will be uh, grilling someone for the show. Um, of course, today we have the group CEO of Red One, Farid Yunus. Thank you very much, uh, Farid, for, for joining us on the show. Um, of course, I'm going to let uh, Harish do all the grilling because, uh, you know, <laughs> it might be a conflict of interest if I, if I, say, if I say things. You seem to have a lot of conflict of interest, Rashid, but anyway... <laughs> Farid, uh, welcome. Yeah, Farid, welcome to the uh, show. And um, yeah, let's let's get started by um, exploring the telecommunication uh, industry at the moment. Now, um, as Red One Group CEO, um, could you just share your insights of how COVID nineteen and the movement control order has Im have impacted the uh, telecommunication business in Malaysia, particularly? Um, how has it evolved? Because um, as we all know, people have been relying heavily on data. I mean, they used to have you know, their office Wi-Fi, public Wi-Fi, but today it's all about their own personal data. And uh, more importantly, stable uh, connection while working from home, interacting from home and being confined at home. So your thoughts, please. Well, yes, indeed. Uh, I'm lucky that uh, I'm in an industry that is very uh, resilient, especially in times of uh, crisis or or a recession. Everyone stays home and uses their phone. Yeah. But, uh, you know, we, we, were, we gave one gig free a day for people to use uh, since they're stuck at home and Zooming and, and working remotely. And uh, we hope that helped uh, with, with costs and affordability. Uh, but yeah, we are one of the few industries that didn't really suffer too badly. We have seen our sales drop down to nearly zero. So we're not getting new subscribers. But our existing subscribers don't have an opportunity to, to churn, to go to another network. So we man I think all telcos have retained their, their original customer base. Uh, in fact, the only downside we've seen is in collections. So okay. because we are postpaid, we bill people. Mm -hmm. But in the past, they would go to our dealers, you know, and 90% of them would pay through the dealers and not online. Mm -hmm. So we've seen a big change in behavior where now we see the majority of people are, are actually paying online rather than at a physical uh, over-the-counter. But uh, yeah, we've seen sales, maybe revenue drop, maybe 10, 15%. But again, I, I'm thankful. Other mm -hmm. industries have dropped to 0%, you know? Yeah, yeah. So th th that's good. And uh, the thing is that you've now, um, you, you've uh, pretty much in the Malaysian market and you've now, uh, in you're now in the Singapore market. Now, Red One launched its services in July uh, 2019. Correct me if I'm wrong. Singapore, um, yeah. Yeah. So, besides Singapore, I, I know um, it, it's uh, not the right time to think about expansion, or perhaps it is, uh, given the current situation, but uh, if you've stamped your mark in Singapore, um, will there be a regional presence, I mean, beyond Malaysia and Singapore in, uh, in the near future? Uh, given the current situation, given the fact that um, yeah, perhaps uh, your revenues uh, in the sense of collection may be slightly down today compared to the same period last year. But uh, moving forward, I'm sure, um, you know, that collection will, will improve. So what do you think about, you know, you know, expanding regionally? Well, actually, our vision from the time we launched in 2012, uh, we use the Cellcom network. We're a virtual operator. We don't have our own network. So we buy wholesale capacity from Cellcom. Um, yes, Singapore, our vision from day one has been to be the largest uh, MVNO, virtual network operator in ASEAN. So we started with Singapore. Uh, before the end of the year, we are continuing our efforts to launch in Thailand in uh, 2020 and uh, the Philippines shortly after. And we are exploring with other telcos in Vietnam, Cambodia, Laos, etc. So we want to be a single SIM card that you can use throughout mm -hmm. ASEAN with no roaming costs. And that's our USP in Singapore. You, you buy a plan in Singapore, you can roam in Malaysia, there's no roaming charges. You just take your, your data plan with you in Malaysia. 
and hopefully we can extend that to ASEAN in the not so distant future. That's actually a very clever um, uh, marketing direction simply because of the influx of uh, ASEAN workers um, from across the borders. I mean, we've got Malaysians in Singapore and, you know, we've got Indonesians in uh, Malaysia. So uh, the way I see it, you're tapping on the ASEAN market, a market that, um, you know, that has a lot of promise. Uh, you know, Vietnam, uh, you know, Thailand, uh, Indonesia, huge populations, uh, increasing internet penetration as well. Uh, your thoughts about the future of this region? Well, you know, with a lot of uh, multinationals now moving out of China, you know, they'll be looking for a manufacturing base in this part of the world. We're still relatively cheap compared to some other places. So, you know, uh, and the population of countries like Vietnam, or Indonesia, you know, the, although the, the spending power is not as good as Malaysia or Singapore, it's about volume. Um, so, yeah, we're very excited about the regional expansion. Uh, Farid, uh, very, just, sorry, uh, just to wait in on no this. Um, of course, China has been looking to moving uh, their 5G base into uh, Southeast Asia. And we just had the news that they might want to move, uh, have Malaysia as one of the hubs. Would that be a, a very something that's advantageous to to uh, to Red One? You know, whenever whenever people ask me about 5G, my answer is it cannot come late enough. Because mm. at the end of the day, all this 2G, 3G, 4G, 5G, it's just a way for it's like upgrading your PC, yeah. Mm. It's just a way for vendors to sell more kit to the telco, and each time, you know, people like Cellcom spend two billion ringgit a year on network infrastructure. And end of the day, 5G is not really about getting shorter buffer time on your downloads. You know, it's more for IoT. It's about the latency, the speed that the data travels. So 5G was designed for IoT, Internet of Things, self-driving cars, things that require very low latency. Um, and so it's not for consumers, really. So our government making a big deal about 5G, blah, blah, blah. It's just a load of hot air. Take it from me, if it was up to the telcos, we, we would delay 5G for another five years. Thanks, for, I needed to hear okay. that. <laughs> uh, speaking about expansion, yeah, um, Red One is no stranger to sports. Uh, you expanded your tentacles in uh, several sports. Hey, uh, hey, hey. Yeah, I know. You're, you're wearing a PDRM uh, FA jersey. Um, Red One is also sponsoring uh, Trunganu FC. And you have, the company has also sponsored several junior squash events. Um, could you just uh, kindly stress the importance of why brands should invest more in sports, especially at the grassroots? I mean, this is something that uh, not just me, but uh, the other partners here at Red One uh, feel very strongly about, uh, about developing sports in Malaysia. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> I mean, I'll talk about the football in, in a second. Um, we sponsor a lot of squash uh, events, especially in Selangor. Uh, so it happens I'm the president of uh, Selangor Squash, and it's mainly for junior squash development. We also sponsor a couple of uh, fences, fencing. Mm -hmm. There's a guy hoping to make it to the Olympics, uh, yes. Deer, who, who won a SEA Games medal, a young, young chap. Mm -hmm. So with fencing, squash, badminton, we are main sponsors of the uh, Sedang BC in the okay. Purple League. Yeah. And we actually have six young players on our payroll mm -hmm. who don't do anything except play badminton and train. And they use their salary to, to travel overseas for tournaments mm -hmm. and, and to pay for, for their accommodation, etc. And all of this is pure CSR. We don't get anything back. We don't even really shout about it apart from maybe a Facebook post. Um, and it's because the first thing that gets cut when government wants to reduce spending, the first thing mm -hmm. they cut is sports. Mm. Which just ain't right, you know. Mm -hmm. Instead, they they are giving a couple of million, I don't know how many million, to to e sports. You know, mm -hmm. don't get me wrong. I, I mm -hmm. love my e gaming. You know, mm -hmm. World of Warcraft, <laughs> World of Warships. Sorry, uh, I'm, I'm still playing, I'm still playing Clash of Clans. Okay. Um, I still PUBG with my kids on the weekends. <laughs> okay. But uh, but physical sports is a bit different from twiddling your thumbs. You know what I mean? Yeah. So uh, we hope other companies who have cash to spare will also invest in sports in Malaysia. You know, sports teaches you about teamwork, teaches you about losing, teaches mm -hmm. you about picking up, picking yourself up and winning. And these things you don't get from, from anything else, really. True. Uh, speaking about squash, um, your president, congratulations, you were uh, reappointed uh, as the president uh, earlier this year, correct? Okay, that's a headache. Uh, <laughs> 
that gesture says it all. Anyway, uh, Slango has had a very good development program over the years. Um, now, let's not talk about the past, but let's talk about what's next for uh, the association. Um, you've got another two more years left in your term. Uh, what are your plans moving forward for uh, Slango Squash? Well, Slango is a bit tricky. Uh, as an association, we are the biggest in Malaysia. We have uh, over 200 uh, players on our roster, and I'm talking about junior players uh, from the ages of 5 to, to, to 18, uh, and then they become seniors. Uh, but we are also the only state which has a club system. Mm -hmm. So in other states, they have a centralized training center where all the players have to come. In our case, we have, uh, we have four clubs from Puchong to Klang, uh, and uh, the, the, the players belong to these clubs. So we don't really have a, a centralized uh, system or camp where all the best players from all the, all the clubs can spar with each other. So the thing we're changing this year is, well, before the MCO kicked in, was uh, we were creating an elite group whereby the clubs would send their best players to one area so they can have, uh, you know, it's very important that good players play against other good players. Good. Otherwise, uh, you know, you don't really improve. So that's the biggest change we're making uh, this year. Uh, but again, it's, it's not easy managing different clubs because they all have their different interests. Uh, I think it's the same with badminton. You know, they don't really want to give up their best players. But we yeah. try to uh, tell them that you're not giving your players up. They still belong to your club. But we want them to, to also be part of the Slango elite team. Well, uh, thanks, Farid, for the uh, explanation. Um, Rashid, anything else you'd like to add on? Well, actually, on to the football side of things. Yeah. Um, uh -huh. and, and Tranganu and all that. Tranganu I mean, FC. Do, do, yeah. As we know, we, we spoke to the uh, um, FAM General Secretary, Suat last last weekend. Last week and, over the weekend. Over the weekend. Over the weekend. And basically, um, he said uh, it may resume in September. How has that affected uh, uh, you guys as, as the sponsors? Well, so with all the other sports and all the junior players that we, we help uh, nurture, that's all pure CSR. But when it comes to football, of course, there is a commercial element there, right? Because the sums are a lot bigger. We're talking seven figures. Mm. Um, in the past, we sponsored Klantan. We have sponsored Slangong. And this year, as you pointed out, we are doing two teams. I don't know. You tell me. I think it's unprecedented that two uh, Premier Leagues have the same main, teams have the same main sponsor, yeah? Yeah. Uh, Trangano, it's because we found that when we sponsored Klantan, our sales really went up in Klantan because, uh, you know, they, they're very passionate about their football. And we are hoping the same thing will happen with Trangano. Mm -hmm. uh, PDRM, it's because we know them. Uh, we mm -hmm. work very closely with the police and Bukit Aman. Uh, mm -hmm. Whenever they need information on a customer, they will come to us if it's our customer. And uh, mm -hmm. by law, we have to give them the details. of. So we got to know them. And over time, and the, mm -hmm. and the simple reason is they needed cash. Mm -hmm. They needed cash. We felt sorry for them. And so we sponsored the uh, PDRM. Okay. Um, so it's not like I can ask for our sponsorship money back mm -hmm. now that the season has been cancelled or postponed, right? Because all this while, they still need to pay the players, especially the imported players. So uh, if the season doesn't resume, I guess it's uh, money that we'll never recover or get any sort of ROI from. But that's okay. We've accepted that. Um, shit happens, yeah? Uh, you can bleep that later. <laughs> no, uh, no, 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 Farid, wait, no, 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 hold on. So, so, sorry, Farid. Um, it, it is quite interesting because we are now getting a, from a perspective of a, a sponsor. And uh, you are saying now that you're not going to renegotiate your terms with the teams. You, it's still going to be as what you signed on the uh, contract with them. Yeah, it's not their fault. And it's not okay. like I can say, hey, can you roll over this cash to, to next year when, when uh, the season resumes? It's because they still have costs this year. Okay. You know? Oh, okay. That's that's uh, interesting because uh, I've heard of some sponsors, uh, you know, trying to renegotiate the terms simply because they claim that they're not getting the ROI this year. And that would be a fair... Uh, argument to make on behalf of the sponsors or you could even uh, insist that the sponsorship rolls over to the to the following year yes. yeah. but that I don't know maybe we're just too nice <laughs> okay 
Well, you know, Afari, on that, thank you very much for, for joining us yeah. on this show. Of course, I'd like to thank uh, um, Red Run as well, uh, your, yourself, for, for, for giving us the time to, to come on the show. We'd also like to thank uh, Amnik, our apparel sponsors for the RSS with HD. But um, on, an, on another note, I guess, um, will you, a final, will you be looking to uh, renew it when, when the, the season does start? Or are you looking at, at other, other teams or other sports? Well, we, we don't believe in just touch and go. When we sponsor a team, we do it for at least two or three years. Mm -hmm. So uh, don't tell Trungano or PDRM, but yeah, we'll probably be in there next year as well. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's certainly good news for them, especially for PDRM, because they're yeah. very good friends indeed. And they're actually good for yeah, football, yeah. football team as well. Yes. All right. Thank you very much, uh, Farid. Uh, for Thanks, Farid. Uh, don't forget to like and subscribe to our show. And we'll catch you again in the next edition of the RSS with HD. Bye-bye for now.